Welcome to State Television Company, Western Armenia, broadcast for today. The regular 14th session of the National Assembly of the Republic of Western Armenia has been held. We are the permanent coordinator of the UN in Baku, not to become a tool of the Baku regime. Baku has a hell of human rights. The news agency managed by the Ministry of Defense of Baku has decided to accuse the Iranian ambassador to Armenia in Haravanshis, Tatevik Hayrabetyan. The handwritten memoirs will be translated from Norwegian to English by a Norwegian missionary who witnessed the genocide against Armenians. An international congress on Armenology will be held in Eastern Armenia. On July 20 and 21st, Didijan will host the second International Crafts Festival. On 17 July, the regular first session of the National Assembly of the Republic of Western Armenia has been held. Before the evening session, deputies of the National Assembly met with the President of the National Council of the Republic of Western Armenia, Mr. Armina Gabrahamian, and Ms. Lydia Margosian, the President of the Republic of Western Armenia. Indigenous national and strategic issues related to Western Armenia were discussed. The meeting took place in a very warm atmosphere, where one of the deputies from Western Armenia participated in the meeting. In the evening, the agenda session of the National Assembly was held. In the first part of the agenda, the President of the Republic of Western Armenia, Ms. Lydia Margosian, had a speech who presented their participation in the work of the Commission on Indigenous Peoples at the United Nations, who presented their participation in the work of the Commission of Indigenous Peoples at the UN, the solution to the issues raised and the answers given. In the second part of the agenda was the discussion on indigenous people's genetic resources and traditional knowledge at the UN. On the results of discussions, Mr. Armena Gabrahamia said that the issue is not closed yet in UN. At the end of the session, a number of other current issues were also discussed. Lodanga Andreeva, the permanent coordinator of the United Nations in Baku, in her interview given to the APA agency, commented on the COP29 event to be held in their country. The Pan Armenian Union government, Shirva Nahijevan, made a number of observations. The UN permanent coordinator noted that the COP29 should build on the landmark agreements reached previously, which imply an acceleration of the transition to renewable energy with a reduction in the share of fossil energy, strengthened policies to reduce emissions and financing aimed at the preventing climate change among developed countries. They emphasize that it is ridiculous that the global event to abandon fossil energy is being held in a country that has long been one of the suppliers of such energy. Continuing this date, whether the representative was not aware of the 2020-2023 about the policy of ethnic cleansing carried out on the basis of ethnic and racial hatred against the Armenians of Artsakh, as a result of which today the entire Armenian population of Artsakh has turned into refugees, deprived of the vital right to return to their homeland. They added that probably the UN is also aware that such a policy is not at all of novelty for the regimes in Baku, which in 1988-1992 carried out the cl ethnic cleansing of the Armenians of historical Garma, Shirwan, Nakhijewan, and the subsequent destruction and desecration of the Armenian cultural environment. The Garma Shirva Nahijevan Pan Armenian Union urged the permanent coordinator of the UN in Baku to confirm its statements to the existing realities and not to become a tool of the Baku regime on the way to mislead the international community. The famous American magazine Newsweek published an article by Artak Beglayan, former human rights defender of Artsakh, a party is presented below. In recent years, the dictatorial regime in Baku, led by Ilham Aliyev, committed genocide against the native Armenians of Artsakh. By Luis Moreno Ocampo, the first prosecutor general of the International Criminal Court, and Juan Mendes, the first UN special advisor on the prevention of genocide, states the article. In addition to the destruction of many Armenian and Christian monuments, Baku's genocidal policy had to lead the forced displacement of nearly 150,000 Armenians from our ancient homeland. It is emphasized that for years, House of Freedom classified Baku as a not free country with political rights and one of the world's worst civil liberties indicators, both due to internal violations and crimes committed against Armenians. After the end of the first stage of the genocide in 2020, the authorities of Baku imposed a blockade on the Armenians of Artsakh in December 2022. As documented by Amnesty International, the blockade has led to a severe shortage of essential food, medicine and fuel. Despite the orders of the United Nations International Court of Justice on February 22 and July 6, 2023, which required the uh, lifting of the blockade on Baku, the Aliyev regime not only continued the blockade but launched an aggression in September that led to the forced displacement of the entire population. Later on November 17, 2023, the ICC passed a new decree that recognized the forced displacement 
replacement and uplift Baku to ensure the safe return of the people of Artsakh, the protection of cultural and religious heritage, and a number of other steps. In addition, the European Commission Against Racism and Intolerance expressed concern about the spread of hate speech against Armenians in Baku. A recent report highlighted current issues related to racism and intolerance. Freedom House released a report literally days ago stating that Baku's documented actions meet the criteria of ethnic cleansing as understood in the context of the conflict in the former Yugoslavia. Through extrajudicial killings, torture, arbitrary arrests and imprisonment, restrictions on access to food and life, sustaining medicine, forced evictions, forced displacement of population and targeted destruction of property. The news agency managed by the Ministry of Defense of Baku has decided to accuse the Iranian ambassador to Armenia of revanchism. This was said by Azerbaijani scholar Tatevi Karabetyan. Let's remember that the ambassador spoke about the right of return of Artsakh Armenians in interview to Azatutun radio station. So Pani is not the first ambassador to speak about this issue. I myself have heard ambassadors raise this issue during several receptions. This is an issue about which no one can have a second opinion. Armenians of Artsakh were forced to leave their home and homeland, so they have an, a right to return, wrote Tatevi Karabetyan. The Baku News Agency also mentioned in the article that the Armenians allegedly lived there. In fact, for Baku, whoever speaks about the rights of Armenians is a revanchist, Haida Petyan emphasized in his post. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Norway will finance a witness of the genocide against the Armenians. Norwegian to English translation and publication of the manuscript memoirs and letters about 10,000 mostly manuscript pages of the Norwegian missionary Bodil Katarina Jorn. Most recently, the Museum Institute of the Genocide Against Armenians informed the Norwegian side about the existence of the archive of a witness, a Norwegian missionary woman preserved in scientific funds. All this was handed over to the museum by her grandson, Joseph Bjorn and offered to cooperate in translating and publishing the Norwegian memoirs in the archive into English. But the Bjorn memoirs are not only for primary importance for the study of the genocide against the Armenian, but also a unique indicator of the age-old friendship between the Armenian and Norwegian peoples. On July 19 up to 22, the first International Congress of Armenian Studies will be held in Matenadera, named after Mesop Mashtot. According to the Minister of Education, Science, Culture and Sports, Jean Andreasen, within this important work, there is a need to listen to the very people who are involved in that important work. They do, do it in the most diverse countries and in the most diverse contexts. To understand, listen to all suggestions, observations, and really come up with a comprehensive strategy of Armenology. They do it in the most diverse countries and in the most diverse context to understand, listen to all suggestions, observations, and really come up with a comprehensive strategy of Armenology. She informed that as of 2024, Armenian study centers have been organized in 15 universities in 12 countries of the world. She also added that in this context, one of the goals of the government is to create a network university for Armenian studies. Director of Madena Deran, Arahaz Malyan, also noted that the expectations from the Congress are very high, and there will be specialists from prestigious universities of the world, including Oxford, Harvard, Polonia, Sorbonne, Geneva, etc. On July 20 and 21, Dilijan will host the second International Crafts Festival. With a program of two-day event, Dilijan will become a festival place for handicraft, traditional song and dance, and delicious dishes. The handicraft class of the peoples of carpet making, embroidery, lace making, good old making, and woodworking countries, the rich culture of pottery has its own unique tradition. The visitor will get to know Eastern Armenia and art in the stalls of master presentation. They will taste the most delicious and diverse dishes of the national cuisine of different people. The rich culture of pottery has its own unique tradition. The visitors will get to know Eastern Army and art in the stalls of master presentation. They will taste the most delicious and diverse dishes of the national cuisine of different peoples. About 40 masters from Eastern Armenia and abroad, Latvia, Serbia, Russia, Georgia, Bulgaria, Romania, Iran, etc. will participate in the festival. An important component of the event is the performance of the Taik Drop Vogue. The International Festival of Crafts is an important initiative that contributes to the preservation and appreciation of intangible cultural heritage in communities which is carried out every year. This was all for today. Goodbye.